Welcome everybody to this week's edition of Valpo Football Preview along with head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichow as uh, the Crusaders get ready for their final game of the year going to Jacksonville this week. Uh, this past Saturday, final home game of the year. And although it wasn't a win, it was incredibly shorthanded and incredibly competitive right. against one of the better teams in the league. You have to say if you look at the scores this year. And uh, obviously a lot of positives. Not a victory, but right. there were plenty of positives. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were disappointed we didn't win the game. Obviously we had the lead with about eight minutes to go and uh, had them on their own 20-yard line. And unfortunately the game didn't turn out the way we would have hoped. But there were. There were a ton of positives. Um, throughout the majority of the game we were playing with anywhere between seven to nine true freshmen on the offensive side of the ball, mostly due to injuries, but not... You know, some guys were out there and, and played spectacular football games. Gene Rene, nine catches, a couple of runs around uh, on, on the speed sweep, uh, had a tremendous football day, just um, catch after catch, the long touchdown. You know, guys really stepped up. We put together some drives. We made some critical conversions on third and, and more importantly, fourth down to keep drives alive. Uh, so I really think it was a game where... Uh, we had a lot of young guys mature and step up and have some success, and, and, and that was great to see. It was also great to see Scott Stahl step up. You know, he started the game, but you know, we knew that Ryan was going to come in and play some, and Ryan went down with an injury uh, in his first series, and Scotty came back in and, and threw for over 330 yards, and unfortunately had some interceptions, which uh, was was very unfortunate. But he made throws and kept us in the football game and brought us back, and we took the lead and. And so there's certainly a number of, of positives on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side, we made a lot of plays as well. It's an, an outstanding, very skilled offense that Moorhead State has, a great quarterback, uh, wide receivers that are really dangerous on the perimeter. I and mean, for the most day, uh, we got a couple of turnovers on our own. Uh, actually got us our best starting field position on the year in the first quarter by uh, the fumble return by Cody Cotton, which gave us first and goal on the five-yard line, and we were able to convert on that. So, uh, so they stepped up and and, and played uh, solid, consistent football when we needed to them. You know, needed them to. At one point, four straight drives in the third quarter, where it looked like we were sputtering a little bit on offense, they just forced three and out after three and out, and kept us in that football right. game. So that once we did find our rhythm again on offense, uh, we were able to come back and actually gain that lead. Dave, you had said going in, you know, we've got some real speedy freshmen mm -hmm. coming into this season. And let's, hey, over the past 20, 25 years, Valpo's had some speed. Maybe not as much speed as you brought in this year. But there's a difference between being fast and being football fast, right? Sure. There's a difference. Yes. Gene Rene, you mentioned him. Uh, he's fast, but he's effectively yes. fast. We see him getting deep. There, there's been guys at any level of, of football who, who can run a 4-4, but they don't get open. Yeah. Gene Rene has the ability to make sure. plays. There's a difference between being just fast and also being able to translate that on a football field. Yeah, he did a great job getting open versus a lot of the man coverage that, that Moorhead was playing. Uh, but the thing I like about him, he's a tough kid. And for he's not the biggest, but for his size, he's very strong. And as you could see on some of those crossing routes and some of the speed sweeps that he was running, he does not go down easily. He's a guy who has a low center of gravity. He fights, wants every yard, and, and, and really does a great job of shrugging off tackles from some bigger defenders. Let's talk about the offensive line before we look ahead. Um, it has been tremendous turnover week after week after week. Seems like a new, a new player going down. Uh, you lost two of your best offensive linemen pretty much almost this entire season, mm -hmm. and you keep bringing in a new kind of new guy right. each week. Yep. That's always seems to be a true freshman. Did they finally come together? Maybe late third quarter into the fourth quarter? Yeah, I think I think they did to a degree. You know, we we played four freshmen, got extensive uh, playing time uh, in the game. Two guards played the majority uh, of the game uh, in Shannon Talaferro and, and Eric Rentschler. Uh, and then our two tackles at times were being rotated out with, with two freshman players uh, as well. So uh, we were playing a considerable amount of players, rotating more through than, than maybe a, a typical game. But you know, on the whole, our players did respond, particularly in the run game. We were able to open up uh, uh, some things. Those young guys did a great job of pulling 
on a lot of our perimeter runs and going out and finding linebackers and on a couple of our screen plays that we got to Jake Hudson, we're able to uh, release downfield and go find a safety or a linebacker and block those guys. So we were really pleased with some of the confidence I think was there that maybe had been lacking in, in weeks prior. And now you look ahead to Jacksonville, they, they've been one of the best teams in the league for a number of years. Uh, Talk about speed. They've always got oh, yeah. speed. This yeah. year is no different. Uh, they will be a true test for your defense, right? Sure. Yeah, they, they've got an outstanding quarterback now. he did, I don't know how much he played last week. I haven't watched all of that game, but uh, uh, their, their quarterback, um, who's a returning starter and, and uh, uh, statistically the best player in the league by far, he didn't play against Campbell. Um, uh, or if he did, it was very limited. So. Uh, they, they're coming off a 2014 victory at Campbell, a uh, close game, but they're 8-2 and two on the year. They've got unbelievable athletes uh, like Moorhead did on the offensive side of the ball, at wide receiver, at running back. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, it's certainly the fastest defense that we will have played, and I would include Eastern Kentucky in that as well. They are very fast. Our quarterback very situation athletic. going into the game. Right. You have Scott Stahl, we know that. Yeah. Do we have anything behind him? Yeah. Uh, well, Jake Paliga is, is ready to go, and, and he'll take reps as the second-team quarterback. Obviously, we'd like not to play him to save his red shirt, but we're willing to, if that's what it comes down to, uh, we'll play him as well. We will get a third-team quarterback ready, uh, a, a wildcat situation with Jared Morgan, uh, who's taken a lot of snaps uh, at that quarterback position over the course of the last three or four weeks. Actually did a great job throwing a touchdown I, pass. I, I was going to say, we were waiting, we've been waiting for a month now, for, yep. will he throw out of the Wildcat? He threw a touchdown yep. pass. He might have to throw more than just one pass right. if, if it comes to that. Yeah, exactly, and he's certainly capable of doing that. So, uh, so we'll continue to refine that package and have that ready to go, and, and so he'll be kind of our emergency third team guy, and, and uh, so we'll have uh, uh, a lot of time to practice that this week, and, and uh, so we'll be ready. All right, good luck on Saturday. Thanks, Todd. For head coach Dave Cicchini, this is Todd Ica. Thanks for joining us this week on Valpo Football Preview.